Well, it's January the 1st, 2019. Happy New Year. Here for lesson two, and we might just get it. Not too bad today. There's a bustle of activities here at Compton Abbas as it's New Year's Day flying. So it should be quite busy with lots of aeroplanes coming in. It's gonna be very, very exciting. I can't wait. Here we go. Busy day at Compton Abbas with the New Year's Day fly-in. Planes everywhere, coming in to land, going out. <laughs> Loads of people watching. Fantastic. Cloud level isn't too bad. We should get a good run today. Thankfully Pete's called me recording. So this is the great thing about the flight sim. Everything I can see, unfortunately I don't think you'll be able to see from there, but everything I see here with maybe one or two exceptions is exactly the same as the flight sim. It's great. So I've not been in this plane before. Let's make sure the GoPro is on. Don't want that falling off. Right, so how are we doing with the checks? Oh, sorry. I'm going to do them right now. Okay, oh, yeah. uh, so, sorry, my apologies. Yeah. Right, so pre-start and starting. Uh, right, so seat adjusted and locked securely into place. Hatches and harness closed. Adjusted secured. Right, so I need to get the three point. Do, do you not use the three point harness? I put on? it on just before I go. Just you, before you get what? Well, I, I, I tend to put it on before you. You might want to put it on earlier so that you're not yes, being distracted at the last minute. got a headset as well to organize so it's best to have the headset on before starting so that if there's any problems during the start you can call for help which you wouldn't otherwise be able to do if you didn't have the headset on makes sense Aye. it's all getting a bit of it's all to do with preparation and getting ahead of the game and trying to anticipate Okay, so hatch and harness is closed, adjusted, secured. Hatches, what, what's defined as a hatch? This thing. A door. Okay, we close very shortly. What's a PAX a safety brief? A passenger safety briefing. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, you would normally give it to me or I would give it to you if you were taking your passengers. Right. But uh, that's fine. Parking brake is on. Yep. Instruments undamaged, legible and secure. Yep, great. Okay, flying controls, full and free movements in the correct set. So yep, if you like to go there. Yep. So we do ailerons. Yep. Yep. The elevator. Yep. Yep, that's cool. Yep. Uh, and rudder. rudder. Yeah, full free movement. That's just the rudder bars. Spring loaded, of course, difficult. Trimmers, rudder and elevator, full and free movement set for takeoff. Yep, so if you'd like to alter the trim wheel to the neutral position. Yeah. Yep, so full free movement, and you maybe have to look over your shoulder to see it actually moving at some point. So if you look over your shoulder with the elevator fully back. Elevator so fully your, back. Yep, yep. And with your other hand, yeah. you can then exercise that trimmer. It doesn't always appear to move because you've got the elevator at its maximum travel. I can't see it moving at all. No, 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 you may not as well until you get to the other end of the extreme travel range. Movie. Yes, it's yes, yeah. small, isn't it? It is small, and uh, as you found out last time, quite a powerful yeah. control. Can be anyway. And it goes to the end position, yeah, does it? Yeah, back to the neutral position, yep. Yeah. Okay, and the rudder trim is this one here. So, again, if you like to wind it all the way to the right, and then all the way back to the left, and then back to the middle again for neutral. And you can probably feel, if you rest your feet lightly on the rudder 
pedal you could actually probably feel it maybe just very slightly moving left and right yes i can yeah yeah, yeah. and then it's tiny though isn't it tiny movements that's right yep and then back to about about the neutral position and that's when the disc is lined up with the end yeah end ideally yep that's it yep yep about about that. yeah that should be about right about my field yep so if it still feels slightly biased to the left, is that? Mm, possibly, it might just be where the uh, the nose was left when we, when okay. we parked their car. Um, trimmers, flaps, check in stages and symmetry. Okay, yep, so in stages, so, so you just pull them one. up, that's it. It's a click, two, yep, and again. Yep, that's all good. Yep. Back down, yeah? Yep. So the lever goes down, but the flaps go up. Yes. Okay, uh, cabin air controls, exercise and close. If it would be, yep, cabin air controls. So exercise just means it's yep, working, yep, yeah? Yep, so all the way. Both of them? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Both of them. Yep, it's all the way over and back again, and then we close them off before starting so that we don't get any fumes coming into the cabin. Okay because that cuts it off because you've got a fire bulkhead and that bypasses the bulkhead if they're open so what's the bottom one there? Oh, uh, one's the cabin heat the other one's defrost so what's the difference? Uh, I think one one is the heating generally and yep. the other one is defrost for the windscreen ah gotcha okay carburetor heat full and free movement set off yes it is heat so we'll take the keys out of the way okay generally they tend to keep the keys on yep and then off yep okay Bottle friction, checked and loose. Okay, so that's the friction. That's a clamp that's fairly firm at the moment, so we've slacking it off. That, uh, that's tight. See, it's only like a cam there. Yep. Gotcha. So that's tight and you want it loose. I want it completely loose. Yeah, because right. you want, want nice free movement. Yep, okay. okay. Uh, mixture full and free movement, set rich. Yep, so, so full and free movement. Both. Yep, yep, both ways, and then set fully rich. Okay. Throttle, full and free movement. Set quarter seven millimeters, seven millimeters open. Yep, okay, so full and free, free and for the close, just a little bit open. That's it, yep, yep. Fuel on, select tank with lowest contents, which was that one. Okay, so, so the select, the, one, the, select the right tank then. Okay. Uh, primer, primer as required and check locked in. So it's that one, isn't it? Yep, okay. And you, so you pumped it a few times. Yes, right, yep, yep. So is it locked? locked? Yeah, it is locked. You have to turn it, do you? have to turn it until the lug comes out of a hole. It has, yeah. Yes. And then you just pump it a few times? Several times, yeah. So about five or six. Oh, gently. Oh, so sorry. Let it fill up because it's like a syringe. Right. And you'll let it fill up with fuel, then pump it in firmly. So drawing, I uh, gotcha. So syringe. Yeah, yeah. That's Shame. it. In firmly, that's it. And you're squirting neat fuel into the cylinder. Couple more? About four, about five, four or five times. Yep. And you find that there's a lug sticking up and That's there's a little it. notch yep. here on this one. Yep. Yep. So you turn it round, turn it round so the lug goes in the hole. Yep. And then turn a quarter and turn. Yep. That's it. So we'll okay. out. Yep. Radio master check off. That's this one here. Yep. That's off. Okay. Master switch on. Okay, so it's just the battery side, yep. Yep, excellent, yep. Fuel pump on. Check fuel pressure, then off. Yep, so it's so on. You hear it flicking away, you've got positive fuel pressure, and then off. Anti collision lights on. That's the rotating beacon at the back, that's that flashy beacon. This so one? A, yep. Yep. Circuit breakers and fuses in position and secure. They are. Do they pop out? Do they? They do, if, it, if it pops out, they look like that. Gotcha. Uh, that one looks like that, slightly dirty. And these would be, I can't get my fingers around them, but they would be proud. Gotcha. They would be flush. Okay. okay. Look out, careful all round, look out, open window, shout clear prop. Okay, so the key in, open out. I would now close my door and just reiterate the door closing. Uh, it's closed, so we just give it a slam, lock the door, check that that's locked, and then the hook at the top. Okay, that's okay. fine. So, in our peripheral vision, we're going to make sure the aircraft doesn't move forward, covering our feet over the brakes just in case the parking brake isn't holding it as it should do. Yeah. So, you're going to shout, clear prop. Yeah. And then, with your left hand, you're going to use the key. Your right hand, you're going to 
control the RPM no more than 1200 on start out. No more than 1200. Yeah. Okay. okay. You ready? Yep. Yeah. So Clear prop. That's it. Yep. And then start. Thank you. 
transmission. Big flyout. So you don't want to step on his transmission. Yeah, right, make the new thing. Can you hear him talking? Thank you. And that's the volume control. Sorry, that's the uh, volume control here. Okay, so we're all we can hold. Any traffic now on final at this point. Okay, so you're you might ready to send you. box one, which is this one. This is box two. I can use box two. If I select box two, it automatically receives on box two. Okay, the mic turn in uh, right back. So Thank you, Lee Mike. Thank you. Well, is that too loud? Yeah, Charlie, 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 Charlie,
Tiers Bank 5, runway 26 right hand, QNH 1038. So busy, isn't it? Yeah. I can't put a knock to make it back in. Lots of people to come in and it's... Sorry, you're in Sussex. There's a free landing service for the way off. Hang on, take off, come on. I'll just have all the time to put it on. Thank you. 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 Station calling Tug M, we're going down the other end, that's it. We're talking to the Abbott Radio, Golf, Zulu, Papa, Papa, Yankee, inbound, request, airport information. Now, we're going to be there, so 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 we're going to
and then as I release the brakes, the aircraft is going to start to run forward, I'm going to allow the aircraft to start accelerating, and as it starts to accelerate, the cap is all the way back, eventually it will become so powerful it will pitch up. So as the aircraft starts to accelerate, I'm going to relax the pressure pressure as the control becomes more effective. Oh, I don't know if there's any parking in the land. As the aircraft approaches between 45 and 55, uh, right we're going to start rotating the aircraft, and the aircraft will get airborne around about 55 knots. So do you start pushing it forward when you feel the nose starting to lift yeah, it out? No, we're not pushing it forward. Thank you. One on short final. Both two in the feet above the 
direction and you also notice that the compass card is not moving either. The wings will be level, as given by the little second of the airplane, with no angle back, which is this point to the top here. And that is the board to the right, you'll be using weather. So that will do the balance part of it, yep. So we will have a look at that in a second. Okay. So you're going in the constant direction with the wings level and you're not allowing the aircraft to yaw, basically. So there's no gross, the aircraft not turning left or turning right in that. So we have been going a little bit of height, or we're actually starting to drift up into some thin wisps of cloud around. So let's just lower those a minute. We're not going to have control the moment. OK, you have control. Yep. And so we're just going to lower the nose and just come back down away from the cloud to give you a better idea of the um, horizon. The cloud is going to start getting lower and lower. Okay, let's we'll go back to 2300 RPM. And that approximates to the strong low altitude. So I'll just come it down to that. And we don't want to let the nose either go up, and we don't want to let the nose go down. We want to hold a certain attitude, so if we hold that attitude down, and we trim it out, so we can take our hands off the controls, the nose either wants to go up or down. The aircraft is maintaining a constant height, on the time of descending, or we're just going slightly there. And that is the attitude that you need to maintain. So you try and hold that attitude as best you can. So the, the, the workflow now is setting the attitude, holding it, making sure it's held and trim it. You either need to push or to pull to maintain that attitude. Can't see it, mate. Yeah. Look at the drizzle from this cloud here. So the lookout, check your attitude, check your instruments to maintain a constant height. Excellent. Okay, so let's just describe that. If they say we had a high nose attitude, if the attitude was up there, so you're actually going a little bit of height. So regain the attitude that you think will give you straight level. Hold it there, chill it out. So the nose either comes up or goes down and relax on the controls. So when you relax, the nose should stay where you left it. Yeah. Again, that's a constant height. Awesome. Okay, let's head to Okay, so we're into sun, so let's just turn around if I may, yeah, the control. Yeah. control. So we just turn us around there after the sun. Fill out there by the way, oh, yeah. from the horizon. It's going to reduce height to the way from this cloud. Give you a better horizon to work with. A little bit of drizzle you can see on the windscreen as yeah. well, which is why you need the heat on. So, chance of icing as well in the double attack. So, that approximates to the straight level attitude. So, that is the attitude you want to try and maintain. Try and maintain three fingers. Yep, three fingers as it was. Okay, if you either have to push or to pull, you need to trim out to maintain the constant height. Okay, let's try and maintain 2,000 feet at a constant attitude there. Yeah. You have to try. I have to try. So if you're having to either push or to pull to maintain, it seems all right at the moment, actually. Okay, so just check now. So look out. Check your attitude is constant. And we're just gaining a little bit of height there. So obviously we're gaining a little bit of height. So the attitude is wrong. So you just need a slightly lower nose attitude. And we can. Okay, so it's upset 
But now let's just try and maintain 2,100 feet, and I'm just going to lower the nose altitude a moment. So if you like to return the aircraft to a straight level altitude, hold it there, I'm not trying to do that, that would be about right. Hold it there, and we can. Okay, we're going to have a check. And drop, and drop, cross the height. That's it, the wings are level. You seem to be moving slightly to the left, aren't you? Okay. So that's the, that's the crossing height, so let's just try and concentrate on the, uh, the direction now. So keep that attitude, but we don't want the aircraft to keep moving to the left. It's turning more and more towards the sun. So try and take a reference point ahead of you, and let's not turn to the left. Okay, I'm just going to get some, uh, the Georgia hold right on that hill over there. Yeah, yeah, and we've got Georgia strength just in front of us there. Okay, so wind is level. I'll just use the rudder to stop us turning towards the left. Keep the wings level. Okay, so you have a constant height. The wings are level. The ball is in the middle. And we're not turning either left or right. So I'll maintain a constant heading. It feels weird because we're definitely still, I guess it's the wind, the wind that we're going with the wind, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're we'll just going on torches to now, so we need to think about turning around. So if I have to come from out, yeah, I'm just going to turn us around from Dorchester. Wait, is that torch still on there? Yep, that's it. We've got power already. Yeah, power on there as well. And uh, we've got Jurassic Coast Line. Ah, oh, fabulous. Because you've got a northerly wind of about 20 knots. So we're doing about 100 miles an hour towards the south. Oh, we were. We're going to do about 80. Towards the north. Visibility is not quite as good this way, but we do have somewhat of a horizon to work with. So I'm a cop. Yep. Aircraft over cop. Low. Excellent. Thank you very much. Just follow that. That's going to turn. Yep. That's fine. What we just do is we just turn a bit more over to the sky. Yep. That's usually moving straight away. So we think we try and pick a reference point ahead of us. And we try and maintain that attitude there. So I'll just kind of hand over the control to you. Hold on there. Okay, and then you have to try and control. Yep, so try and pick the reference point ahead of us like a green hill. Straight ahead of us, just below the cloud. The direction, and try and maintain that attitude. Don't let the nose come up. Don't let the nose go down. And if you're having to hide the push or to fall, then you need to pull a little bit. Then you need to trim. So whenever you need to trim, uh, yeah, have to pull and push you need to cut. And then you do it by feet initially and then on tuning is you just relax, let go of the control parameter. If the nose stays where it, where, it, where it was, that's absolutely fine. Just going to move to the right a little bit. Excellent. So we're now at 2,200 feet. So we are climbing. Okay, so let's choose a different attitude. So we don't look at that, we just choose a different attitude, hold it, and trip. Okay. And then just relax. The nose down goes up for fire, and we're maintaining a constant height. So you don't look at those when you're choosing your attitude. Look outside. Choose an attitude, fill it, and then you choose your lookout, wind level, check your instrument, hold the attitude. Okay? Okay. Excellent. So, we could be flying straight level towards somewhere. So, if I have control of my left, yeah, control. Okay, control. We've been flying straight level, so, if I fly straight level towards somewhere, That's a little bit weird. A little bit. The aircraft's not turning because I've got a bit of right rudder on and the feel that we're skidding. Does it look like the ball is out to one side? To the left, yeah. But we're maintaining a constant height. The attitude's neither going up or down. The winds aren't quite level, but we're going straight towards a reference point. But the ball is out. We're actually skidding towards 
left-hand side. Uh, good. Does that, does that mean the tail's coming out? Or? That means I'm pushing the rudder, means the aircraft is spinning sideways through the air. Right. And then you'll feel that that, that is grossly out. Does that feel uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah, that's very strange, yeah. And we're still maintaining our constant height. So we are staying level, but that's gross imbalance. So we're not turning. The wings aren't level. We're not turning. We are maintaining constant height. But that's really inefficient. Very inefficient. It's horrible. You can feel the engine really struggling. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's odd noise. Okay, so let's just try and keep the wings level. So we need to keep the wings level at a constant attitude, which will maintain height. And we pick a reference point such as a cloud. But we also need to check whether this ball is in the middle or not. Is it in the middle at all? Slightly to the right. So we just put a little bit of right rudder just to pressurise it back into the middle. So we hit the middle, that's ideal. And then we are flying straight. Constant height. In balance. And if you need to put a little bit of right rudder to maintain that, then you need a little bit of right rudder. Just a little bit of right rudder trim on this wheel down here just to take the pressure off your foot, so when you take your foot off the rubber pedal, the ball is actually in the middle. Okay, so you have control, try and maintain a constant height. I have control. 2,100 feet. Select a reference point ahead of you, such as a light cloud in the middle distance. Keep the wings level. And if the... I don't know if attitude is correct, just showing, just take your hand off. So that's just a little bit. Yep. So always check. When you think you've got it right, just relax. You can do it. Okay. Relaxing. Yep. And that's it. Perfect. Excellent. So you've got a constant height. 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 Just a little bit of right rudder, yep. And that should keep you balanced. Okay, we've been going for a little while now, so let's put the fuel pump on. Fuel pump on, check the fuel pressure. Fuel pressure is good. And start the other tank. It's not too white. Yep. Okay, so we just leave the fuel pump on for 10-15 seconds to make sure the flow is being maintained. And then we'll then think about switching the fuel pump off, checking the fuel pressure again. Yep, okay, so fuel pump can go up. Fuel pump off, pressure, good, perfect, the engine's not faltering. Josh, try the carburetor heat. The RPM sort of come down about 2300 there. Let's try the carburetor heat. Note the RPM to start with, just over 2200. I try the carburetor heat to hot, they can't be hot. Yep, hardly at all. Hardly at all. Usually smooth running. Right? And then back to cold. Back to cold. Okay, let's go back up to 2300 RPM if you would. There's a little bright light on the horizon. Yep, I see. Yeah, so use that as your reference point or the blue bits of cloud above that. And we'll steer straight towards those. Keeping the wings level at a constant height. Maintain the constant height, so we're not firing on this end. So we got it. Yep. So we choose an attitude. Okay. So set the attitude. So hold it. Oh, that's good. Now. And we trim. Okay. Hold up. Okay. Right away, right away. Yep. That's it. Keep the wings level. If you drift it off, just gently turn five degrees of bank back to your reference point. The wings are level, so the constant height. Oh, it looks like we're climbing at the moment. So we've got a wrong attitude. So let's just lower the nose attitude. Choose a different one. So we select. So half a finger or a full finger down. Yep, yeah, let's lower the nose attitude. Lower the nose attitude. Lower the nose attitude. Hold it. And we check. Right. Change the attitude without reference to the internet. Right. So 
so it's just really slightly going high, so just lower over the high, just a tad, hold it, and try and release him, okay, and then you're going to take the cost of height. Okay, so you drift it off slightly from that reference point, so just bring the wings level. And then you've got your wings level with a constant height, so 2,700 feet. And we will then check that we're in balance. Okay, do you want to just try the cover of the heat again? Okay, can't be hot. Yep. Slide off. Yep. Can't be hot. Yep, all good. Okay. And uh, now, just try to do this mixture control. So we know the RPM. And uh, you can turn your flow yoke off. I'm just going to come back on the, uh, on the mixture control. You can come back quite a way before the engine starts to falter. Push rather than a, than a stab. 
But if you find that you're having to keep a constant pressure, either with your hands or with your feet, then use one arm of your patella to reduce the pressure so you can take your hands off and it doesn't move anywhere. Try to keep the wings level. Left hand only, normally you will be fine. That's it. And you then got time to look around. Yeah. So the left field is just behind the winter there, just on the winter. Just slow the winter. There's the field. Are you the there, Tom? Yeah, I see it. Yep, so uh, that's fine. Okay. So, let's just alter that now. Let's just try that. We're going to lose some height. So I'm going to mess you up. So if you are going to the attitude when I give you back to you, I have control for a minute. Yeah, control. I'm going to maintain 2,500 feet straight level, please. 2,500. And all this heading. So, choose an attitude you think is appropriate. Hold it there and reach it. May not need it, but you might have to trim it. So, let the nose go up or down when you're doing that. Going in a straight line rather than your own left. So uh, uh, keep the aircraft going straight. So the wind is level, constant attitude, check that by just relaxing. Yep, perfect. Constant height, constant direction, no turn, the ball is in the middle, but we're a little bit high, about 100 feet high. So I just lower the nose, just, if it's just plus or minus 100, just lower the nose, just to come back onto 2500. Okay, so you back down to about what you want. Just hold it there a moment because the aircraft may have accelerated slightly, so just hold it there. She'll settle down and just make sure she's turned. Yep. Yep. So just losing a little bit of height there, so just. That's it. So look out, attitude, instruments. Okay, so you want to make a left turn all the way around to the left. Yep, yep, left turn will be fine. I'll bring you back around towards the airport and I'll just get the information for going back into the airport. Thank you. 
up there isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, you're doing very well. So we lost a bit of time messing about, uh, just a little bit of extra time there, so 1.1 for that. But you did quite a lot of taxi and you introduced you to radio and um, that was straight level. So next time up it would be straight level at different speeds, um, different power settings and we'll practice more upsets of, um, so I will get you at straight level, I will then upset you with height and heading let you recover back, upset you with height heading and be grossly mistrimmed. I'll upset you with grossly mistrimmed, height and heading not being right, and I'll alter the RPM and get you to come back, set 2300 RPM, 
strain level attitude, so it's power first, attitude, hold it, trim. So you set whatever you need, hold it, trim. And once you've got it like that, then the workflow is then look out, attitude, check your instruments. Okay. And if that is wrong, change the attitude. Right. Change the attitude, hold it, retrim. Then check. And you may find people, myself and other instructors, doing that so you're not stop your cheating. Stop your cheating. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the temptation, it yeah, definitely you're not is. Into yeah. flying at the moment, you're visually flying. Yeah. It's the attitude. So it's the power you've got set plus that attitude which will give you the aircraft performance. Okay. Okay, and if you haven't done a bit of theory of flight, then um, basically um, the the wind, sorry, the lift that you get generated from the wing of the aircraft is a product of both speed and angle of attack. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you want to fly straight level at a certain speed, there will be a certain attitude, and that will give you the lift to balance the weight of the aircraft. Yeah. If you increase the speed but keep the same attitude, then you will increase the lift. So, if you want to maintain the height, then as you increase speed, you have to lower the nose attitude. Because by increasing the speed, you've generated more lift, and you'll climb. So to stop yourself climbing, you want to lower the nose attitude to reduce the angle of attack, so that the byproduct of the angle of attack and the speed is still enough to produce enough lift to balance the weight of the aircraft. Understood. So there's a combination. So as the aircraft accelerates, in the train over flight, you're going to have to have a low nose attitude, and when you slow up, if you reduce airspeed, the wings produce less lift, and you have to compensate by increasing the nose attitude, increasing the angle of attack. Okay. That comes in the theory of flight. Up to a certain point, we're in straight level flight around about 50 knots, which is the end of the green arc. The aircraft will be flying, it won't be able to sustain enough lift at that speed in straight level flight and it will stall and if you've got the flaps down that's why the white arc extends lower to 44 knots with the flaps fully down you can fly straight level as low as 44 knots before the aircraft gets to a situation where at that speed if you try and fly any slower you're going to have to increase the angle of attack and the angle of attack from the airflow is so steep that the airflow breaks up over the wing and it gets a huge loss of lift, huge increase in drag, and the aircraft loses lift, and you get that sinking feeling. Which is okay if you practice it at several thousand exactly. feet. Exactly. <laughs> but not if you do it by mistake at 50 feet. That's going to hurt. It's quite complex, isn't it? Well, that's what it calls out. When people say all oh, the aircraft stall because they saw the engine stop. No. An aircraft stalling is when the angle of the wing over the wing exceeds the stalling angle of attack which is roughly 15 degrees. And you haven't got an indication of that. All you've got is an indication of sloppy controls from the first lesson we did. So if you're flying slowly these ailerons will feel sloppy. Even if you've got high power those will feel quite firm so will the rudder. Sorry I forgot to switch those off too quickly. So um, in straight level flying, you can fly as low as 50 knots and with the flaps out, 40 knots before you get to that. So you'll get an indication of stopping controls with the low airspeed. And because there's no real natural stall warning on this aircraft, there's a little bit of buffet. But before that happens, you generally get that stall warning vane blaring at you. But don't count on that because if the battery's gone flat, that won't work. Right, right. It's the feel of the aircraft, particularly the ailerons, and in straight level flight, the airspeed is a good indication. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions? No, that's great. Okay. Really good. Good. So really we covered good. those bits and pieces there. Key stuff. Yep. Oh, we'll leave that there. We've just got a um, chapter. Do he's got to do a couple of circuits to uh, renew his uh, validity? Um, we we'll just check the fuel because we need to do that. There's um, a minimum equipment list 
uh, for the aircraft. Put it on the back of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Do you want these in the back seat, Pete? Um, yeah, that'd be fine. Um, yeah. So there are some acceptable defects, and the the list for a big aircraft is an A5 booklet that thick, closely printed on both sides, because there are hundreds and hundreds. You don't want to be grounding a 80 million pound piece of equipment because the bulb holders not right. Okay. So there's a big list of acceptable defects. So it's between about 10 and 10 and 20 percent of aircraft, commercial aircraft flying, flying around with one or more minor defect. And depending on how minor it is, it might be allowable for 120 days. It might be allowable for up to 10 days. It might only be allowable to get you back to base before it has to be fixed. But provided other things are in place, or there might be certain speed or weight restrictions. And this is a list of items that can be unserviceable and for instance cockpit lighting is required not required for the day but it is required at night so it's a no-go item fairly obvious that you need mm. cockpit lighting at night um, for instance um, the fuel gauge fuel contents gauge um, it's okay to be inoperative during the day and at night, provided a visual inspection must be carried out before every flight and the fuel for the planned flight with normal reserves must be plus one hour continuously as a minimum because that gauge is inoperative. Makes sense. So it is acceptable to go but we do need to check it each and every time. And on a lowing aircraft there's absolutely no excuse for running exactly. out of fuel because it's right there. It's very easy to check. Just to open up, have a look inside, and the tang is 65 litres. It's 130 litres. Okay. And you've got a dipstick as well. Mm. There's a question mark about whether, you know, you have to climb up on a high-wing aircraft where you need to get the ladder, or it's inconvenient, or I checked it yesterday. But there's a friend of mine who took me canoeing. Most of his other members of his family have some form of flying, uh, career in flying and his brother in Canada had fueled the aircraft a couple of days before, knew it was full of fuel, flew his wife out to an island, ran out of fuel and stalled and crashed and they both died. Oh. And it turned out that the local biker gangs had come along oh, no. and drained the fuel out of his aircraft and he just assumed, assumed that it was okay from two days prior. Oh, that's so sad. Simple little check. For a simple little check, but even if the engine stops, the gliders don't have engines. That's true. That's very true. Glide. Best gliding speed, 73 knots. I okay. call it 75 for cash. I can't fly that accurately. Okie dokie. So, right, one more thing. Um, we changed over fuel tanks. Can you select off for me? Would it be? Yeah, go and try to it off. Ah, there's an interference knob there. If you've never looked there, there's a little grey knob. Do you want to push it in or push it out towards the periphery? Push that knob Just down. Yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah. Ah, right. Now you try and do that one-handed while flying the aeroplane. <laughs> you can't. And and you're having to panic because the engine stopped. Oh, I can just about do it, but it's okay. A pain so in the you backside. think about that. So, so put the fuel back to left tank again, or left or right. Okay, and you and the interference knob pops back out. Mm -hmm. Practice that with your one hand, with put your finger on it, so that it push that knob out of the way. So, it, so in the event of having to do a forced landing, to safeguard and secure the aircraft, make it safe, we close the mixture throttle, magnetos off, fuel goes off, whilst you're flying the airplane towards a field of your choice. So you need to be able to reach down and do that one-handed mm -hmm. to the off position. Okay. Yep. Yep. So it's just you're in there. Yep. Gotcha. Normally, normally we don't turn it off, and people aren't practiced at doing it. And then they sort of, with the aircraft, you know, no, you've got to fly the airplane whilst you do other things. Gotcha. Excellent. Yeah, very well done. Thank you. Well, weather permitting, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Excellent. So we we'll carry on. So it'll be straight and level. Um, straight level at different air speeds and a bit more RT and have a look at the that the, the the motor music or the mouth music 
for when you're turning the aircraft you're going out you're turning to the right a compass and di increase artificial rise is level and steady a right turn or left and as you turn the other way compass and di decreasing in value artificial rise is steady left turn and you'll be skinning to the right and you're checking that the instruments function in the correct sense so you're checking on the ground that the instruments turn as they should do so you get the correct indications there's no good getting airborne and finding that is stuck where you could have just done a little turn yeah. check that it was actually moving what's the difference between slip and skid okay slip and skid uh turn skid um okay slip and skid because it's really skid puzzly. is this way slipping is that way if you see depending on the direction where you want to travel it's um Perhaps uh, it's it's it's, it's an interchangeable term for okay. both things. Okay, right. so if you're turning, uh, if you're turning and you haven't got enough bank on, you'll be skidding. If you're turning and you've got too much bank on for the rate of turn, you're slipping, because you'll be slipping. If you imagine yourself at a velodrome, like where you have the banked, um, you know, the, that, mm -hmm. that really nice sort of uh, a laminar flooring that banked up around the corners. If you are at the right speed, you'll be at the right level halfway up the velodrome and it will feel nice and comfortable. And if you had a glass of water on your bicycle handlebars, the water will be level because you'll be at the right angle of bank for the rate of turn you're doing. So in an aircraft, if you're skidding, you've got the aircraft is at a certain angle of bank, but it's skidding outwards, in which case you might need more bank to stop it. And if you have um, too much angle of bank, uh, for the rate of turn the aircraft could be slipping inwards right. so it's slip when it goes towards the center of the turn skid when it's out of the turn okay that makes sense and the way which you stop it skidding in it is you will push foot pressure to bring the ball into the middle right there's also when you rotate the aircraft to the right if you rotate the aircraft to the right that goes to the right, that aileron goes to down into high pressure, creates more drag. Mm -hmm. This one goes up, less drag. So the aircraft rolls this way, but because that is got, uh, sorry, big part, the aircraft rolls that way, and because that's creating more drag, that wing comes gets pulled backwards. So to offset that, then you use rudder aileron coordination. So whenever you're using your right rudder, you go right rudder, left rudder, right rudder, right rudder, left rudder. And it's not that big movement like I've got my foot, it's a pressure. Gotcha, okay. To overcome a long drag, we, we can sit and talk about that. Uh, next time, we'll talk, particularly when we talk about turning. Brilliant. Okay, excellent. So, oh, a nice cup of tea now, I think. Nice cup of tea, yeah, really that was awesome. I haven't got my voice recorder in, so it's going to be a bit windy. That was amazing. Look at this beautiful plane. Absolutely fantastic. What a trip. So busy, so much, so many aircraft. Anyway, off to the Zebra. We got up, we got up, yes! Oh man, that was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> got really lucky with the weather. Camera recorded, 
<laughs> yes, I never. I was beginning to think I'm never going to get some footage of me flying. The weather was okay. The clouds just stayed high enough for us to have a, a decent fly out. Uh, it was manic with all the other aeroplanes flying around and helicopters. It was awesome. So many. What a great time. That was really good. But you know, sometimes I've seen two, three, four airplanes uh, in front of us, beside us, up below us, down, up below us, <laughs> up above us, down below us. You can see I'm, I'm quite, uh, quite excited at the moment. Uh, that was really good and another thing I found is that I'm beginning to uh, relax a little bit more so I can take in other things my first lesson I was like Ugh! but now I'm just starting to, to chill out a little bit so I can just absorb a bit more information now which was great and Pete was really good very calming very relaxing that was fantastic <sighs> more like that please and hopefully more tomorrow <laughs>